What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to get the best performance out of your ROG Ally X. And keep in mind, this will also work on the original ROG Ally. Got a few tweaks here that I've been using for quite some time on the original and the new X. Plus, I wanted to show you a third-party application that kind of replaces Armory Crate. It's a lightweight utility that allows us to kind of tweak and tune the ROG Ally or the X to our liking. And it's just a bit deeper than regular Armory Gray SE. So if you're interested in boosting the gaming performance of your ROG Ally X or ROG Ally, let's go ahead and get into it. Jumping right into it, like I mentioned, I will be showing you an awesome application that I've been using on the ROG Ally and the X for a little while. But you know, if you don't want to install a third party application to control everything with your device, that's totally fine. You can use Armory Crate. But the very first thing that I recommend on basically any Windows PC is heading into our settings so we can get there right here. Apps, installed apps, and basically go down the list. Find what you don't want installed anymore, something that you don't use on this device. Now, personally, I've already got rid of uh, Cortana and it's kind of weird that it's still here in the latest version of Windows 11. I've uninstalled that. Here's the feedback hub, something that I'll never use. I'll just go ahead and uninstall it. Uh, OneDrive, I personally don't use OneDrive, so that's another one that I uninstalled. On this device, I'm not gonna be using Maps. Basically, anything that we can get rid of that might be running in the background, taking up you know, RAM or using the CPU can definitely help out. Now, if you're using your device as your main device, then some of these applications you just might wanna keep, and that's totally fine, it's really up to you. Another one here, I'm not gonna be using news on this device. I usually just go down the list, find applications I know I'm not gonna be using on my handheld and uninstall them. And all of these applications that we uninstall here that came pre-installed with Windows can be reinstalled. All you'll need to do is head over to the Windows App Store. The next thing I recommend doing is disabling core isolation in Windows. It's something that I always do with my handhelds and mini PCs. From our search bar, we can actually just type in core isolation. It's gonna be right here. So there is a little bit of warning about this. Um, memory integrity, that's basically what we're gonna be disabling. And even Microsoft themselves do recommend disabling core isolation if you know you're just gonna be gaming on your machine. So what we're gonna do here is just turn it off. We're gonna get a pop-up. We'll have to restart our ally in order for these changes to take effect. And if you ever wanna re-enable it, it's easy enough, just searching up core isolation. But before we restart, there's one more thing we wanna do here because it's also gonna give us the same prompt. We're also gonna turn off virtual machine platform. We can search up, turn Windows features on or off. Moving down just a bit, we're gonna find virtual machine platform. We'll just disable it, choose okay. It's gonna go through the process, apply the changes, and we'll have to restart anyway. So we'll go ahead and restart. Then we'll move over to some more performance tweaks. So we've disabled or uninstalled some apps that we're not gonna be using on the Ally. We've also disabled core isolation and virtual machine platform. Next thing I wanna talk about is very obvious and that's just updates. So make sure your device is updated from the Windows Update Center and Armory Crate. From our settings, Update Center, of course, I usually leave Automatic Essentials Update on. Just make sure everything here is updated. I mean, you're gonna get the best performance with the newer updates from ASUS. And yeah, I've got everything ready to go here. Next thing I wanna talk about is still inside of Armory Crate. That's gonna be under performance. And of course, from here, we've got our power profile. So obviously, going to turbo mode is gonna give you the best performance. But usually what I do is game at 900p performance mode. And on the ROG Ally X, this does take us up to 17 watts. But we've got a few more things here. Eco Assist. Now, I've been doing a lot of uh, testing with Modern Standby. When it comes down to it, Extreme Standby Mode and Modern Standby Assist really isn't going to help out with uh, overall performance while you're gaming, but this can save battery when your unit is asleep. So uh, you can definitely experiment with this. I usually leave it on, but moving down just a bit, CPU Boost. So this is actually really important when it comes to overall performance in certain games and battery life across the board. There are games out there, I know for a fact that Cyberpunk 2077 loves CPU boost on the ROG Ally and the Ally X, but there's a lot of games that we play on the ROG Ally and X that really don't need CPU boost. For instance, playing indie games on the Ally, you really don't need CPU boost enabled, 
but the power profile that's already included does a pretty good job of not boosting up that high anyway. So one of the best options to deal with CPU boost is to set it up in our command center. That way we have easy access to it. So we're just gonna add, and you can see we've got CPU boost right here. So now when we go into our command center, so we can just turn it on or off on the fly. Back into performance, GPU settings, memory assigned to GPU. This should be set at eight gigs out of the box. Uh, I'd say eight gigs is great with the ROG Ally X because we do have 24 gigs of RAM. Basically, we can allocate eight gigs to the iGPU and keep 16 for the system. On the original ROG Ally, it usually set this to three or four. But for the Ally X, eight gigs, this is gonna be more than enough and it will allocate more across the board if it's needed and if we have enough RAM to support whatever game we're playing. But with the Ally X, we can go all the way up to 16. To tell you the truth, you're really not gonna notice a difference in performance from eight up to 16. So I'm gonna leave it right there at eight. Down just a bit more, AMD Advanced Graphics Options. Usually I leave all of these off and leave it to the AMD software here to enable it per game. So uh, I'll tell you, one of my favorite things is AMD Fluid Motion Frames. With a lot of these newer games out there that don't support it in the settings, this can really help out. Super Resolution is another great one. But with what we've got here on the ROG Ally X, just optimizing your game settings from within the game can really help out. You know, you don't want to run everything at ultra settings 1080p. We're still working with a pretty low-end GPU, so low, medium settings is kind of where it's going to be. But remember, a lot of these AMD advanced graphics options can be added to our command center. You can see we've got AMD RSR, AMD RIS, and again, we've got that CPU boost, which is something I recommend putting right here in the command center. And the final thing here from Armory Crate, obviously, I mean, it's going to be our performance profiles. On the ROG Ally X, silent mode is gonna be 13 watts. Performance mode, 18. Turbo mode, 25 watts. And of course, in turbo mode, you're gonna get the best performance other than a manual mode and kind of up in that if we can but battery life will suffer. So usually I'm in performance mode here, but again, we've got manual. So we can adjust this across the board. SPL is our sustained power limit. So if we were in performance mode, it'd be 17. SPPT is gonna be sustained for two minutes. And then we've got the FPPT, which is 10 second boost. And I'll tell you, even with our presets, Performance will boost up over 18 watts for a certain period of time. If you just want to kind of set a static across the board, and I know performance is 17 watts, but even on the original ROG Ally, 18 watts is my sweet spot. This is exactly how I like the game. Armory Crate SE is an awesome option for tweaking and tuning your ROG Ally, be it the original or the ROG Ally X, but it is a bit limited. Now, what I wanted to show you here is something that I've been using for quite some time now on my original ROG Ally, and as soon as I got the Ally X, it's something I installed. This is G-Helper. It's a lightweight Armory Crate alternative for Asus laptops, ROG Ally, and it does work with a ton of different Asus devices, including the ROG Ally X. This is actually going to allow us to tweak and tune even further with our device here. Constantly updated, super easy to use. Basically, what we're going to do here is download it so there's 198 releases we're going to go with the latest version and i'm sure it'll be higher than this if somebody's watching this in the future we'll download the application from our downloads we'll just go ahead and extract it and basically all you need to do is run this and there we have it so this will work with the built-in controller if you need it to and what I usually do is set up a shortcut. So I'll just create a shortcut here, place it on my desktop. We can also have this automatically start up once we start the unit up. But G Helper is really awesome. If you read through everything, I mean, it's very similar to Armory Crate. This is just a lightweight alternative to it. Silent mode, balance, turbo, fans, and power. There's also an FPS limiter. We can set up the AMD overlay so we can actually bring this up quite easily. Auto TDP. The Ally controller can also be set to auto, gamepad, mouse, or you can skip it. So if you're using an external controller and you don't want it to interfere, you can always set it up like this. RGB brightness control, controller remapping, and we've got dead zone control for our analog sticks, our triggers. We can even change the vibration strength right here. 
RGB control. You can also change the color and it'll also check for updates for our device. So basically it's a lightweight armory crate, but the main reason I like using G Helper over Armory Crate SE is the fans and power section. So keep in mind, when we open this up, it's actually gonna be set to one of these profiles. So we've got our silent, balanced, turbo. And as you can see, we've got total TDP control. We've also got CPU boost control, Windows power mode, and we can set each one of these up. So if I wanted to uh, go with silent at a much lower wattage, let's say seven watts, apply power limits, that's it. When I go to silent mode here, it's gonna to go to seven watts. Balanced was already preset at 18 for me. That's my settings that I use. But moving down the list here, Windows power mode, I leave it at best performance. CPU boost, you can disable it from here, keep it enabled, but we've got a few more settings. So if you wanna use CPU boost with a game, I suggest using aggressive, mainly because uh, when you're at aggressive guaranteed, it's gonna put more wattage over to the CPU to get those boost clocks up guaranteed, therefore taking power away from the iGPU, lowering the clocks on that. So I'm usually at aggressive when I'm using CPU boost, and we can control the SPL, SPPT, FPPT, all the way up to 50 watts, down to five. So if I wanted to set this to a certain TDP level, usually 18 watts is kind of my sweet spot for this and the older ROG Ally. I make sure apply power limits is here. And now when I go to balance mode, I'm at 18 watts. Turbo mode, we can take on up if you want to. But remember, higher wattage equals more heat, less battery life, it's really up to you. This just kind of gives us more control over the Ally. And the other thing here, fan curves. Apply custom fan curves. We can set this up any way we'd see fit. So yeah, you can always go back to factory defaults also, in case you mess something up. But we've got dual fans here in the uh, Ally X. So let's just say turbo mode plugged into the wall. I wanted to do 50 watts across the board, get the most performance out of this thing. Usually I'm setting my uh, fan curve up just a bit more. And when I'm plugged into power, I'm not worried about the noise here. Usually just uh, plugged into a monitor or something like that. So now silent mode, I've got it set up for seven watts, balanced at 18, turbo all out at 50 watts and make sure apply custom fan curve is on if you're gonna be using the custom fan curves. You can also set up a custom key to launch G Helper at any given time. So while you're playing a game, you can bring this up on screen. From extras, out of the box, it's gonna be our ROG key. So when we press that, it'll bring G Helper up. Usually I disable this because I use my back paddle to uh, launch G Helper, but this is fully customizable and you can set it up to just launch once you start up your ROG ally. Personally, big fan of this. Might not look as fancy as something like Armory Crate SE, but we can really dial in the performance using G Helper over SE. And the last thing here might not come as a surprise to a lot of people out there, but one of the main ways to get better performance out of your ROG ally while gaming is just lower that resolution. Instead of trying to run these games at 1080, take it down to 900p. For instance, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 running at 1080p low. I'm at a 20 watt TDP. We can't quite hit 60, but as soon as we take it down to 900p, we can get right up to that mark. And gaming on a seven inch display going from 900 to 1080, at least to me, doesn't make a huge difference in fidelity, given that we've got such a compact screen here. But yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Of course, there's a lot more tweaks that you can do to Windows 11 to get a little better performance out of it. But when it comes down to it, these are what I use for my unit. And if you wanna download G Helper, I'll leave a link for that in the description. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Like always, thanks for watching.